Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dragon Talk. We have a yeah. 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 We live we studio have audience. Yes. We have a very special guest today. Uh, WWE superstar Ember Moon Woo! is here. I want to throw my chair. <laughs> I'm so excited. Are you properly trained? I feel like I am. As, as a How are you doing? Major. I'm great. I'm, I'm excited. I'm really pumped. <laughs> like super jittery, excited, nervous, caffeinated up, like ready to go. Yes. All right. That's Me exactly too. how we like our guests. I've had like four of these and I'm ready for a fifth. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for, for a while on a show called Up, Up, Down, Down. How's that been going? Yeah. Um, it's awesome. We actually have our D and D show where we do like a homebrew version of Fifth Edition um, with WWE superstars, uh, and we just have fun. Like D and D is fun for us, you know. It's it's great. Like we're two seasons in, working on the third season now. So, uh, but I've been playing way longer since before that started. So as part of the inspiration of how that started, but nice. I, yeah. It's when great. when did you start? What was your what was your first uh, uh, session playing D and D? Ooh. Uh, I can't tell you the year because I feel like I can't remember that, but I remember uh, it had to be maybe 11, 12 years ago, something like that, mm -hmm. um, playing second edition. And it was because we had gotten to a weird spot on wrestling on the independent circuit where we just didn't have anything to do. There were no shows. And so a friend of mine who had uh, DM'd before he got into wrestling was like, hey, let's play D&D. &D. And I was like, what? No, that nerd stuff? Nah, I'm good. And then he was like, oh, just try it. And Lord behold, I fell in love with it. Like, it's one of my favorite, favorite things to do on my off time. Like, we try to play once a week, twice a week if we can. Nice. It, it's awesome. What so, was it that, that made you love it? Um, It just kind of took me out of my world that I was dealing with and like yeah. with all the travel and like, you know, wrestling, it's hard on your body. It's hard on your family, but just being able to chill out, relax and forget about like real world problems and have to worry about, Hey man, how are we going to break into this tavern? Just still a couple, you know, barrels of brew or, <laughs> you know, whatever. Hey man, that guy seems real shady in that alchemy lab over there. Like those are like problems that just kind of take you out and just let you relax and chill and you can be anyone you want to be. That's great. Yep. That's awesome. And the first session you, you played in, you, you were saying uh, uh, you, you were playing a healer. Is that right? You were playing a, a cleric? <laughs> yes. I was playing a uh, cleric human, which is even worse. Uh, she was a priest of Mistra because oh. we started in second edition. <laughs> right. You know, that dreaded Thaco learning math. Oh, my it God. Was quite hard. That's how you learn D&D. &D? And you were still like, I love it. This is awesome. Yep, all of it. Yeah, and uh, I became the healer. I remember having many a temper tantrum of running out of spells and not being able to do anything. So I was swinging a mace or a flail at that time. And at that time, I think the initiative roll was like a 12 for just to swing a mace at that time. <laughs> so it was just so much anger that I had like toward being a healer. And, like, <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. Like, healers ever again like i want to hit things really fast i don't want people to depend on me and so shortly after that i became a wizard where i would fireball just the general area and who cares who's fighting there you know if your teammates are there, you know, they'll get roasted they'll get a little toasty you know they'll watch be out right. for the wizard <laughs> so i have uh basically killed off a couple of my party members oops because i got fireball happy when i was a wizard so you know, I've, I've played every class. I like that you were like, all right, healer, no, I'm going to yeah. go to hurting my parody yeah. members, not it's heal them. the complete opposite. Well, like, I wanted to be, like, this, like, powerful mage and just, like, be like, yeah, I can do lightning over here. I can do fireball over here. And, and the party who were all, like, barbarians and thieves who were, like, trying to get in close to get attacked, I was like, eh, I'm going to win. Who cares about the team? Oh, well, There's an eye somewhere in that bird, right? <laughs> <laughs> if that's the healer's problem, <laughs> to be able yeah, to bring them back healer. up, right? <laughs> I just I like the whole idea of having this angry healer. Like I, now, I kind of want to play this character that's just like angry and bitter about having like to curmudgeonly, heal them. Yes. like oh gosh, I guess uh, fine. <laughs> I got hurt it's again. Okay. Like an angry like <laughs> recess monitor or something. Like oh, these kids keep falling off the jungle gym. <laughs> What yeah, am I supposed fun. to deal with them? Exactly. <laughs> exactly like that. that. That's exactly what it was. So you're playing, so you were learning and those early games were with other professional wrestlers? 
No. So, uh, well, kind of, it was just kind of like a, so my current husband, uh, my boyfriend at the time, um, we would play together with his best friend and like just whoever would show up. Like yeah. it could be anyone from someone that was working the concession stand at a wrestling show to maybe someone that was an announcer. Like we played with like anyone who just kind of wanted to jump in and have an experience. Then we played That's with cool. friends of friends of wrestlers because they were intrigued. Like it was just a bringing together with Cheetos and Mountain Dew and all the good stuff, you know. And we just had fun, you know? Yeah. When it was, was it when you were on tour? So like when you're like, oh, here's some downtime. We got hours to kill and that type of thing. Um, so it was before I was on um, kind of like the WWE level. So we have this independent circuit, which is best kind of described. Uh, and I hate using this term, but it's just the easiest way to determine it. Like, kind of like the minor leagues and yeah. then WWE is the major league. So there's a lot of staying at home. I kind of book my own schedule. You know, if I don't want to work one week, I don't have to, you know, type thing. Yeah. So we would kind of see who was in town and we would play. Like uh, one of my favorite adventures that we played was Ravenloft. Like nice. to this day, like that's that's my jam. Like I, I want to play it once a year, every year. Like, uh, we're actually doing uh, the fifth edition module right now uh, for the very first time, which uh, Ravenloft was already big. I didn't know it could get bigger <laughs> on any <laughs> level. So I'm, so I'm super excited about that. I actually I just bought, like, a model to build Castle Ravenloft. Oh, my God. Uh, really? Have, yeah. Like, um, I would show you the boxes, but it looks like chaos on the other side of this room right now. I'm actually in my D&D room. Nice. Uh, <laughs> hence the castle in the but, background. Yeah. Yeah, we'll pretend like this is Castle okay. Ravenloft, oh my God. but like it's in a whole bunch of boxes and we still have to build it. So that's that really cool, awesome. but it's one of my favorite modules. Um, I love that you have yeah, a and d like, room. I, yeah. Yes. Uh, so like, I know you guys can't see, but I like, I have D20s, like dice pictures that, in the shape of dragons. Like you can kind of see my dragons up here. Ooh, is that a, a skull, too. dragon skull up there? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I got a dragon skull up there, but I love dragons. So like there's actually just dragons littered across this entire room with dice and d20s and chest and all sorts of craziness <laughs> is this the room where you play D D or just where you keep all your where you display your everything okay. <laughs> your display room or the playroom so like this is where we play D D. like this big uh cabinet right behind me this is where all of the books are the dice the equipment there like on this like you guys are actually on uh my husband has gotten into painting minis so oh. in front of me is just paint and minis and like he made a little forge uh homebrew over there so like this is this is where the magic happens for us wow. right here I in this love room that. i love it too i like that it's something that you both enjoy and you both do like usually like there's maybe one partner has like the room where I do my crafts and the other room, like the room where like I paint my minis or something, but you guys like, are all in on this together. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Like we started playing together, like since day one, we've been like D and D together. I don't know. <laughs> gaming, adventuring. Uh, Was like he new to D and D too? Uh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. So like, yeah, we started together from second edition, to third to 3.5 to four to all the way to currently. So, you know, we've been playing together and it's a really cool, like relaxation time for us to the point where currently we are a married couple, which we've never done before. Oh, we are the interesting. In our current, in our current uh, adventure. I like that. So it's, uh, oh, it's fun. Like his, uh, his character, like I was raised by wolves. And so he was a hunter who killed all the wolves and found me. But I don't know who slaughtered my family, but we ended up being married. And I'm trying to get him to turn into a werewolf. <laughs> Just uh -huh. to be a wolf. <laughs> so, which works out perfect for Ravenloft, if you could imagine. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So do you, do you like playing with your, your husband? <laughs> of course she I does because <laughs> i don't i do not i like find no, like parts I of his personality that really annoying when he plays dnd really <laughs> um so i think it's the other way around i enjoy playing with him but he may get irritated with me because i'm very much so it doesn't matter what class i play i'm always going for the treasure even if i'm not in that room like uh if i'm like oh if i'm like barely walking through this room and someone's like oh i found a chest and i'm like oh i roll it and i'm like <laughs> 30 feet back. I'm like, no, no, no. I called this on that. That's mine. No, that's mine. You can't have it. Put your mage hand on it. Mine. <laughs> mine, mine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he, gets, he gets so um, upset at uh, 
me making terrible like D and D decisions. Like uh, <laughs> terrible D&D. We were doing... <laughs> That's how <laughs> we, I feel. So there's a there's a part in Ravenloft where like you go into this abandoned windmill, and I'm playing a ranger of this adventure, which I never really do too much. And I talk to animals. This crow's like dangers inside. I'm like, ooh, let's go, you know, because <laughs> that's what we do as adventurers. And we go in, and we're sneaking in, and um, <laughs> there's a barrel of like black ichor or black liquid and i go oh i dumped that over to see what it is just not thinking and he's like we're sneaking what are you doing i was like oh Curious. <laughs> was there anything in it <laughs> well, well it was just black liquid <laughs> 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 It was nothing. And so we alerted the hags and had to fight the hags oh, three no. on one versus being able to pick them off one by one. <laughs> just, I, I can relate to your husband because you play exactly like my husband does. He'll just like oh, see yeah. a bookshelf and he's like, oh, I'll just tip it over. But why? Yeah. Why are you tipping it over? Right. There's no need to tip over the bookshelf. So my thought process was, is that there was something at the bottom of this barrel that I needed that may have been magical, but I didn't know if the liquid was acid or if it was like a jelly ooze or I, I didn't know. You never know what's going right. to happen, you know? So I was like, eh, Part of the but fun. I wasn't thinking. I could have I done that later. I really could have. <laughs> I just was like, oh, this is the first thing I thought of. I'm helping. I'm helping. I'm, I'm helping. <laughs> there could be treasure. There could be a magic item yes. that could help you kill the hags in the there, bottom yeah. of the liquid. A hundred percent. That's and what liquid, I was liquid, like thinking. as it's flowing out of a barrel, it's pro- it seems like it would be quiet. I mean, it's not like you <laughs> dumped over like a bucket of rocks or something. It's right, just like, like a, oozy liquid. A, 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 a <laughs> cowbells. You're like, I'm going to pour out this bucket of cowbells. This will be fine. Well, it was it was basically like I tipped over the entire barrel. So it was just big. <laughs> okay. So that. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, I can see that. Not helping the party. <laughs> at all. Well, I love that. And you're definitely all in. I saw your your tweet the other day of, of uh, going to a game store and, and bringing back a big pile oh, yeah. of loot. Um, I still do it. Like, so I actually like right under this, uh, you guys can see, I have another brick of nice. The oh, wow. figurines right there that's underneath my castle, um, you know, scenery. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I actually went there and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go into the comic book shop. I'm not going to get more D and D stuff. And I'm, Oh, look, they have these this week. So very much so like I have almost every book imaginable behind me imaginable in this like thing back here yeah so like i'm I'm all in like i still need more players handbooks and stuff but just it's the small things that make the adventures great so like as many figurines as we can get like as much scenery as we can get too like we're we're just all in on trying to make this a really cool experience for us across the board that's awesome i love all that there's just so much accoutrements that you can get and make it I don't know. I love the ticky tacky stuff. Uh, I don't have the time or the or the money, honestly, to make all the the, the scenery type things. But uh, I, it's like a dream. It's like oh, that's you know, first. I need to get a D and D room, and then yes. I need to get like the scenery like happening. And then you can like, build your crafts in there. And then I'll build my crafts in there. Yep. Yeah. yeah, like literally, we just have like a whole bunch of like old picnic tables like strewn out, and like I was like, oh, maybe we need a tablecloth or something to make this a little bit nicer. But we're like, nah, it's all right. It's D&D. like we got them all at like garage sales and WalMarts, and you know what, whatever pop by, you know. But like, it was the one thing when we moved back home from Orlando that I was like, I really want a D and D room. I really just want a room that's dedicated to this. Like, and that's like everyone comes in, everyone's so relaxed. I've been playing with this group for almost six years oh, now fun. so we have the same core group it's me my husband his best friend who were the original three as we like to say it and then like we have some people that come in and out and then our uh, dm and his wife uh we met them like five six years ago and we just fell in love and we're like all right let's try this gaming situation you know how you play with someone for the first time you're like oh yeah. i don't know how this is gonna yeah. work it was like magic and we just been playing ever since like it's awesome that's cool and so the dungeon master is not you or your husband have you ever have you ever done that have you ever wanted to jump in um (laughs) so my first dm experience was was, uh, kind of my last i wanted to give the original dm that we met like a break from dming i was like this doesn't seem too hard you get a little module you read the module and then you kind of you know go along so 
this I don't remember the exact module, but like I didn't really read through it all the way. I didn't really know all the rules. I was like, yeah, I guess you can do that. Or yeah. And so it came to the point where they found a random magical item. And I was like, oh, well, roll your percentiles. This is this. They got a Vorpal Blade and they're like second level. Oh, and, man. <laughs> but that's what they roll for. And <laughs> I didn't know that there were different in second edition at that time. There were different charts based on levels and all right. sorts of stuff. And I was like, Oh, well, they have this horrible blade that's going to be here. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. This is difficult. You know, nothing made sense. Like, we're astral plane traveling for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> it was, but it was fun. It was, it was fun enough. I don't know if I would try it again, just because I had so much more of an appreciation for the DM after we played. I was like, oh, my God, you do so much more stuff than I thought you did. I thought you just read a book, and you're like, hey, you do this, or hey, this right. happens. And it's so much more to that. It's, it's changed. Crazy. It's changed over time I too. Because I spoke to uh, a guy who used to play in the '80s, and and I would play with him now. He's just getting back into it, and he's like, "Oh, this, you're way different than we had played this." Because they would get a module like Ravenloft or whatever, <laughs> and they would just be like, "All right, so you go into the next room, and here's the three monsters that are there." Okay, and then we just play it like almost like a war game. They wouldn't do any of the the yeah. the real descriptions or or you know trying to make it feel like you're really there they just kind of ran it like a like a game and then they would take turns they're like oh yeah, dungeon like, masterings no, no yeah right? they didn't they didn't really care um and then now i feel like the the way the trends are you you, you it, there's so much more of a craft around making sure people feel uh uh that they're in this imaginary world uh, a lot more yeah, exactly. And fifth edition does like a really awesome job with like creating that story that goes for like 10 levels and then might continue on in a next book. Like, but they do a really good job um, of just telling that complete story from beginning to end. And like, I absolutely love it. So nice. it's, I'm totally down with you. Like I, I played with the DMs with the encounters and I get so mad. Cause I'm like, Oh, I wanted to role play. Yeah. Like I got this eight page story that I'm unraveling <laughs> right here, you know, and not being able to being able to like be like but but this is a character flaw right here you know like in this you know not being able to role play that like for for some of us that sucks yeah. so bad and you just want to be like some of us crave like the storytelling and being able to interact with uh billy bob the the janitor at the keep over here or whoever else like i love like, billy bob the janitor <laughs> <laughs> he's very well you know, known I, he's one of my favorite characters yes. Very popular NPC. <laughs> Very popular. Um, so do you uh, watch a lot of other people playing, like streaming-wise or things like that? Have you watched Critical Role and, 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 and consumed um. people playing? So because of my travel schedule now, I find it very hard to watch um, the shows now. Like, I've seen Critical Role, which was awesome and fun and amazing. I've seen Acting Live which was just a really fun experience and got to meet with some of them. Uh, we did Roll Out Live not too long ago at PAX East. Sorry. Right. It feels like forever ago, but it was really like two months. It was really two months ago. <laughs> um, yeah. In Boston. Yeah. We did our first oh, ever wow. rollout live. So a lot of the guys from Aki helped us get that off the ground and stuff. So it was like really cool. It was like, Oh my God, you're Jim dark magic. Oh my God. Hi. <laughs> you know, like I'm being girl out cause I know who they are. Um, so yeah, but I watch, I watch when I can, but it's never consistent across the board. But then also like I'm playing my own stuff and, <laughs> you know, so it's like, ah, am I going to watch that play or would I rather want to play? I'd rather play. You right? know? That's, but that's it is me cool too. It is cool being able to watch them and see like their success. And I'm super happy that like the D and D world is booming up so much more. Like, I feel like every week there's something else going on and I'm like, Ooh, what's this over here? You know, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And what I, I like seeing the different, like, ver like ways that people play out there. Right. Cause there's, you know, mm -hmm. as you're saying, there's people who are like super role play heavy and love getting into their characters and, and feeling that, but there's also, uh, ones that blend more combat and tactics or, you know, more, uh, uh adventuring, mm -hmm type stuff and i love that there's yeah. these different flavors of dungeons and dragons out there that people can um uh, can look at and be like oh this is how i want to run my game or, or or this is the type of game that would appeal more to me and i want to find players that would fit that bill see i remember us watching someone play and i don't think it was one of the bigger groups but they use um ball bearings so we were playing 3.5 at this time yeah so someone got the ball bearings in their mouth and there's a spell called like thunder wave that you can do that just basically blows everything. And so we were like, so the DM was like, oh man, so you just alerted 15 guards from their barracks. They're coming at you. And I was like, and uh, my husband was like, throw the ball bearings down, do thunder wave. And so he throws the ball bearings in the air 
thunder wave and we're like all right how many did how many ball bearings did you have and we're like oh well that's something you just kind of get at the beginning of the adventure so we didn't know so you rolled a hotel or something we had like 89 ball bearings what? and like we just obliterated oh my everyone God. with basically like this shotgun blast worth of stuff but i think it a lot of it also just depends on your dm and how your dm likes to play as well sure. because like we had a dm that probably originally wouldn't let us do that because he likes to <laughs> we had a dm when we first started playing that one did win D D. yeah so <laughs> So we had so many uh, total party kills. Like, I feel like we just got frustrated as a group. And we yeah. were like, hey, man, we want to, you. <laughs> you know, it was. We don't want to die every session. Although then you every get to create session. more Why backstories. Just, it was like, kind of fun. That is true. If, <laughs> if you like, do uh, add a TPK, then you have to create new characters, which is fun. It's kind of fun. Just don't get attached. Oh, man. No, we, I think we just committed to like characters at one point in time because we didn't really understand when we first started, like, and it was, it was very much so, all right, guys, we're just going to do this little encounter. Like, you go into this village, and they're being kidnapped by kobolds, which we know that's everyone's favorite D&D villain when you start off at first level. Yeah. These dreaded kobolds for some reason that won't leave anyone alone. Like, they have their own village. So we go into this village, and we go into the first hut, and there's a trap, uh, which we set off immediately, which <laughs> alerts everyone. And then, of course, we went into the perfect, like, tent, too, which there's, like, two shamans, but all child, or, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, one hit, you're dead. And I'm like, what? Hold on, hold what? on. I didn't get to roll for initiative, but you but you did the trap, and, and it was like, no, I wanted to roll with the dice. So, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even let you roll? Oh, no. Oh, man. So, you know, just going from that to the way we play now, which is crazy, because without those experiences, though, we would never learn that, hey, we should probably search for traps like these. This is a thing that happens now. But like failing so much at the beginning helped us like improve so much more. And then we had someone in our as well that is uh, trigger happy, as I like to call it, (laughs) like doesn't want to talk to anyone just wants to hack and slash his way through everything and that doesn't work for a lot of things no (laughs) and so i remember i remember we went into this keep with these like starved soldiers in a different adventure and he goes oh he insulted me i fight him and there's like 200 men here and we just watched him get up we're like nope we're sitting back on this one (laughs) you know (laughs) <laughs> and he, he was so mad he didn't play with us for a month after that he was wow. like, that's not fair you guys were with my party you know you guys left me high and dry we were like you were in the wrong these people were just starving trying to get through their day and you're up here antagonizing for a month we didn't play because he was like no i'm taking my dice and going home <gasps> type situation oh, <laughs> no. but did he learn eventually did he figure it out where he's like oh wait a second can we still play together? Do you still play together? I mean, he's gotten better, but I think he he has played different characters that allow him to do these things, and it makes sense. Oh, yeah. Though I'm like, eh. You're still trigger happy. <laughs> I'll yeah. just sit back and watch the chaos happen. So. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's good from for a story perspective. Like, it adds a different element there's when the, you have the, an instigator or yeah. like someone who's like gonna just make things happen yeah. can be good because sometimes you can just spend i mean i don't know i've spent hours in a session just debating Nothing's about happening. what we're going to do yes. and like trying to make a plan and i'm like all right let's, let's just do something in that case you do need the characters that are going to knock the bookshelves over for no reason or like tip over a barrel filled with black goo or yeah or antagonize <laughs> helpless townspeople because then you do have story. And you got but, something to react to. Yeah. And it's interesting, though. Like Because there's like, nothing worse than uh, going to a city and not finding the hook. Let me right. tell you about yeah. that. It's probably frustrating for the DM, <laughs> not getting that. too. Maybe that's why they put the barrel of black goo in front of you. <laughs> that was it. You're like, I, I can't resist. I don't know. Something yeah. might be I in love it. that you're still trying to justify me knocking over this barrel. <laughs> <laughs> We're on your side. I am trying no to worries. help you. I will not. I can't justify my husband knocking over the bookshelf, but... You two you should talk to each him. other's partners like you, and be like, you've yeah. seen him. Like, he's always, like, off on his own. He's always, like, doing things that, like, doesn't seem like. Yeah. Although you're, the you're, most I've played with him recently, he's been playing the healer. So he, like, can't do any of that. He's playing a oh. centaur healer. That's weird. That needs to go up ladders. We're like, oh, ladders. On the one thing that centaurs can't do. Why would he do that? <laughs> it just was the way that the, the, the adventure was. But he's like, okay, uh, what are you going to use your upper body well, strength also, to like, go up? The... It just feels weird, like, him, like, oh, laying so hands good. on you. I oh. just want to see someone live action play that for me in my mind. <laughs> yeah, <Just> like, uh, <laughs> with the orbs trying, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> He's trying. Oh, oh my god! And the horses are big, right? They're gonna be like two thousand pounds, like trying yeah, to Yeah, like careful thing. healing. Like, ow! <laughs> You're pressing too hard. I know. <laughs> You're pressing too hard. Ow! <laughs> Stepped on my foot. <laughs> Man, it's so funny. <laughs> so this is, I mean, I, I don't know much about wrestling. I was definitely a, someone who, uh, when I was a kid, just never got into it. My best friend was into it, and I was always like, ah, it's not my thing. Um, but I watched uh, Glow, the show Glow on Netflix. And, for, mm-hmm. and I was a theater person. I've done lots of acting and, 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 and producing theater. And for some reason, watching that show, like, it all clicked. I was like, oh, it's a, it's a performance. It's, it's, it's a... It's storytelling yep. through yes. the act of, of combat to a certain there's extent. There's a lot of D&D yes. in there. And then I started to think, like, oh, it's basically what Dungeons & Dragons is. Like, Characters, there's very yeah. so, backstory. So how, how has it informed your, your, your other career uh, uh, in doing that by playing you know, D&D? Or, or is there a crossover in, in your mind at all? So maybe not for most people, but for me, my character, uh, Ember Moon, is based off of the Dean character that I actually had. Um, oh, wow. Which oh, is that. so cool. Yeah, yeah which um, was a dark elf uh, mage, I believe. I can't remember. It's been so long because my favorite character is my half dragon. Um, but yeah, it was actually based off of a character I had called Nine Eve, who is a... Um, half elf and i feel like i like multi-class or something that's why i can't really pinpoint it down like warrior mage type situation there. Oh, cool. and so like she had anger issues and like <laughs> just raged a lot so that was one of my uh flaws that i took uh that was a second edition character but she took um uh so in second edition they have the traits and like disadvantages and the more disadvantages she took the more skill points you could use to buy these cool things. And right. one of them was I had, I was quick to anger. I had anger issues. So I would just rage at everything. They'd be like, hey, I'd be like, what are you talking to? You know, what's <laughs> saying to me? That- so like, that was one of the traits I took. And like, that's kind of like what I wanted um, this character to be, just kind of quick to anger. And like, it's still in the development process of that, but still like uh, this character that you see before you is based off of my D&D character, like down to, gear down to everything entrance all the stuff so that is amazing that is, i didn't realize that so <laughs> was that part of your shtick like when you when you were pitching it where is it like oh i want to do this this is my D character or did you leave that aside and just be like oh no this is what i want it to be so originally when i pitched the ember moon character it was something that they were like and eh, that's not gonna happen you can't go around being a warrior with swords and banners and like that's just not gonna be a thing and i was like oh, okay and then um it's funny because my debut promotional videos came up before i even really knew what i was supposed to be doing mm. and I just got a text like from a random number uh, from corporate saying, hey, we're playing these videos. This is you. And I was like, oh, is it now? (laughs) And so I'm watching. So I'm watching uh, TV, watching uh, NXT at the time. And I see this video and it's like this dark, mysterious character, which was not exactly what I pitched. But I was like so much more into it because I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. I'm in the woods. Yeah. There's a moon coming around yeah and so like i just went gung-ho like i have to be this D character i have to do this 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 and so at the very last end of it i was like oh well drows have like red eyes purple eyes that type thing i was like oh i wonder if they'll let me do red contact lenses and so i remember like i'm at my debut it's the pay-per-view and i managed to get like red contact lenses that day and i was like okay hey i saw that you guys put these red eyes in the in the video thing can we just do red eyes across the board and they were like "Eh, i don't know and i was like "Ooh, could we please pretty please and they were like and then when they saw it on camera doing like rehearsals of like entrances and stuff they were like yes this is you we love this so i got like my dark l drow red eyes and nice. you know eventually my hair got to this uh but i had silver hair for a long time oh my that god was that's like amazing my, yeah yeah so i had silver hair for like i think a year and i love my silver with my red eyes and i was just my drow character from D for the so longest great. time so like are your signature so, yeah. moves like based off of your character like things that like um 
I wish I try to be as intense and aggressive as I can. Um, my finishing move is actually a top rope diving stunner, which is kind of like, <laughs> it's a lot of Spanish. If you don't know wrestling that I'm saying to I, you right I now. I kind of do know. I feel like I, I'm pretty, I'm getting but, very versed in wrestling. Because of Quinn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but basically I jump off the top rope, do a corkscrew and grab someone by their head. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I try to be a little bit of everything, but mostly it's just intensity and aggression with a little bit of high flying kind of out of nowhere type stuff. That's kind of like what my style is. I just kind of want to change all the time. Like I try to never do the same thing twice type thing. Oh, okay. So That's cool. I, yeah, I, I just like changing. Like it's, it's my jam, you know, does anything <laughs> ever happen like in your D and D games combat wise? And you're like, I'm totally recreating this in the ring. This would be amazing. I'm going to cast I'm fireball gonna, in I'm the gonna ring. I'm going to corkscrew your ass. I love it. So it's funny <laughs> that. Wait. Uh, so that actually me, uh, <laughs> This is the family show. <laughs> there have been several times. Uh, there have been several times where I wanted to do like something like super acrobaticy that I'm like, oh, I want to jump off this thing and like come down and like get him with my dagger or so which never works out because I always fail the athletic role or the acrobatic check when I want to do cool stuff like that. But I remember for um, season two of Rollout, uh, the season finale when we had our big bad, like it just turned into a wrestling match. Like the last five minutes, and my character, of course, is dead on the ground, like rolling my checks to stay alive at this point in time because that's what I do. Um, <laughs> and I'm just watching the chaos go by i'm like how did we turn D D into wrestling and so for a while <laughs> after we filmed it we were trying to bait if we wanted to like uh because we have like 2k and everything like that we wanted to mocap the ending to our D D session because it was so pro wrestling nice. <laughs> that it didn't do it justice not to and we didn't end up doing it just because of scheduling differences and mostly because my character would have been on the ground like this <laughs> for the rest of the adventure but oh, you know it so was fun. it was really cool like it does play a factor into those things <laughs> i love that i know that's awesome <laughs> i want to i want to uh, uh yeah see more crossovers you need there. to watch more wrestling i need to watch will, more wrestling. that will help inform your dnd yes <laughs> exactly for sure. <laughs> We've, I mean, people have pitched to us the idea of doing like a, 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 a wrestling in a fantasy environment. Like what would happen if someone invented something like WWE in the Forgotten Realms and like what it would be like having that co that combat and have like stars and names and have oh people promoters God. and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, my God, that's such a fun idea. Yeah. I think I would just want to be in that movie. Like, yeah. Like, imagine pro wrestlers get teleported to Perun or Waterdeep and they have to function and find their way home. Like, oh my God, just put me in that movie yesterday, please. Thank you. Like, that done. would be, I would just want to see like the townspeople's reaction to like all these pro wrestlers just, just materializing in right. their world. I think they'd be like, okay, yeah, those are adventurers. Yep. Duh. Duh. Yeah, Duh. it's easy. <laughs> they wouldn't be that, that, they'd be the one group of people from this world that wouldn't stand out too much in Faerun. <laughs> they'd be like, all yeah, right, right, yeah. Like shiny, outfit, shiny outfits. Oh, oh that so must cool. be magical armor right there. A lot of oh, underwear and socks. Oh, why is that guy wearing two socks and underwear? Oh, okay, <laughs> well, Strong. That's his. He's strong. His uniform. Like, let's give him a sword and see what he can do. Let's put this guy on the city watch. You know. I feel like like early early D and D art is kind of similar. Yeah, actually, a lot Keep of the early art underwear. was all very like yeah. you know buff Conan -y. Uh, Conan esque. Yeah. Yeah. So I we, we talked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> before sorry. before we started recording, we were talking about my son's infatuation with <laughs> wrestling. He's six as of yesterday, so I feel Happy like birthday, it's time. Thank you. We can embark him on his his career as a professional wrestler. There was actually one. Exactly. I, I asked him once, like about his name, and was like, "Do you like the name we gave you?" I'm just curious, and he was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm like, "What do you want your name to be?" And he goes, "John Cena." <laughs> so for a while, then we had to call him John Cena. Like, Come eat your Cheerios, whatever. But I'm just curious, like what your how what your path was to to becoming a professional wrestler. Like, how did this happen? Um, to be honest, like uh, I was super nerdy and super tiny, 
when I was in middle school. So I was always bullied a lot. Like, I mean, I grew up on the wrong side of town or the other side of town. I won't say wrong side because it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but I grew up on the other side of town and kids in life that I talked to were that different. I read comic books all the time. I would wear, you know, in middle school, which is not supposed to be a thing. I was wearing Sesame Street shirts and Barney, you know, to school because that's what I liked at the time. And, you know, I just got picked on so much. And kind of stood up for me who ended up getting bullied because she stuck up for me oh. was a massive wwe fan mm. and so we became really good friends i got sucked into this wrestling world and i was like you know what like i'm gonna become and we'd always be like we're gonna become wrestlers and so we can defend ourselves and stand up for ourselves and because we were afraid to even talk back to these girls that's how bad it was oh, yeah. and so we got to the point where we would like come up with these personas and like, or we would pretend to be like the current wrestlers that were there, like Triple H and Stephanie McMahon and Ray Mysterio. We were like, oh, I'm going to do this to them when we go back to school. And then we go back to school and be like, oh, hey. uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, but that's how I got like kind of sucked into the wrestling world. And like, as time went on, like she drifted away from it, but I got more and more sucked into it hmm. like and i was like i'm like to the point where I, when i was in high school i was like all right i'm gonna go to this college because this wrestling school is around the corner from there and then then i'm gonna go to this you know i would plan like where i wanted to go to college around where wrestling schools were around wow. the uh united states so and then when i finally got to the point that i accepted to some of these colleges my parents couldn't afford it we couldn't do the student loans that type of thing so i ended up going to community college but lord behold there was a school right on the corner nice. no way and just by happenstance there was a school that opened up around the corner so i was going to college working two jobs and then by night like i was a vigilante wrestler by nighttime you know <laughs> by six o'clock I'm running, you know, driving across uh, like two cities to go to wrestling training, then telling my mom I worked late and driving home, getting home at midnight. Like, oh, man, it was a rough night, mom. You know, they didn't know. Did Ooh, they not know like... you were in wrestling school? No, no, not at first. Like, so I was very like scared to tell them because I was very uh, academically like just driven for years. A straight A student from day one to the end source thing not the end but sort of the end <laughs> um but like so i didn't want to start wrestling fail at it and then have them say well we told you not to do it mm. so it was one of those things that i wanted to do for myself and i wanted to succeed or fail on my own but i also wanted to have that like i didn't want to go through life thinking what if yeah yeah and what if what if i didn't try it what if i didn't you know at least go in and see what it was about. And I'm glad that I did because like for years and years and years, it was soccer, soccer in school, soccer in school, soccer will get you into a good school. So you play soccer, 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 school, soccer, soccer, school, 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 school. And that was just it for me. And so like, this was like kind of my first rebellious thing that I did for Mel. And so I fell in love with it. Like obviously worked hard, you know, got the dream job. And like, that's just kind of how it went for me. That's great. What what was the school like? So what are is it just like a gym where people go to and like the classes. you know train together or or what? How does that how does that they work? Don't, so facilities now are absolutely amazing. Two three rings, you know this nice enormous space with the little twenty four hour fitness or something in the corner. Um, what I got when I first started was a public storage building with a ring inside of it, and the ring was. 15 feet by 15 feet and the building was 16 feet by 16 feet. oh my god what so when you would hit the ropes or learn how to run the ropes there were like inventions in the wall yeah. from where people went through the wall when they hit the ropes so you had to run the ropes in a certain spot <laughs> or wow. else you would be hitting the wall. wow uh but there was also like no air conditioning like now nowadays like i don't think people understand like how lucky they are because they have these facilities that have air conditioning and they have this amazing ring with all this space around the ring <laughs> you know they have people that care about them that care about their you know nutrition and hygiene and you know all sorts of stuff like the wwe performance center in orlando if you guys ever get a chance to do like one of, they do like visits and stuff like quarterly it's, it's one of the coolest experiences that you could have 
<laughs> and we're, we're going Wayne. there like at, at br- around Christmas time. Oh, you're already planning. We, we have a trip to Orlando. Yes, for, we were going to take him to Disney, but now I mean, you know what to do instead. I mean, yeah. this would be way cool. I mean, this they, is way cool. Like the performance center, all access, where you get to see the training facility. <gasps> they do like a private show for everyone there too. You can see the gym. You can see how much work that they actually put into like. Um, us becoming WWE superstars. And it's a really cool experience. Like, I wish I could have gone as a kid and I wish that was around as a kid. Yes. Um, but, but yeah, going from this like, ooh, maybe we spent like a couple of grand to get this like tiny public storage unit for a year versus this multi-million dollar like beautiful museum of a facility that they have now. And going from that to this, absolutely like mind-blowing. I bet, yeah. <laughs> you know, but what I had is not what anyone else will have in their future. <laughs> well, but now you've got that story. You've got that like, well, yeah. back in my day, yeah, yeah. we only had one <laughs> foot <laughs> clearance <laughs> on outside of the ropes. You know, you know what's crazy is that like I've been doing this for 14, almost 14 years now. Um, and like I act like that now. Like, and everyone's like, why do you act like you're 80? I was like, well, back in my day, we didn't have AC at these units. <laughs> like, if I do it. I do it now, and they're like, "Oh, you're such an old lady," and like <laughs> call me Auntie Ember. That's you Aww. know, like, it's like, oh man, like I've been doing this a long time. You boys don't know nothing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> My Texas Southern accent. There comes you go. Out too, exactly. you know? Auntie Ember actually sounds really cool. That does sound like a hag that you'd be fighting against. Auntie uh, Ember. And, Auntie uh, Ember. From the plane of fire. So, do you do training and mentoring of of other athletes now? uh not so much like training um like i have several friends that like you know we all grew up together you know some of those guys just need that big break and like someone asked me for help i will give it to them you know close friends type thing like, but make, make um, not everybody not like what Quinn. about like a nice little six-year-old yeah. boy who <laughs> likes to go by the name john cena hey, girl, <laughs> no like um it's always been a dream of mine to open up a school to be like that mentoring person to train people to do what I love. Like I've always just loved teaching. Like for now, like, you know, we have such a community backstage with the WWE, you know, there are always going to be those people you don't like, or that you get into little fights with, but for the most part, like we're a family, like a dysfunctional family. Yeah. (laughs) But we're a family. And like, so if someone needs help, I'll help them or if I need help, they always help me. And it's like a really cool atmosphere like of that, but it's always been us versus them. So you can't say anything about my family. Mm -hmm. And me clap back, even though, even though I might not like the person, you know, but you know, it's, it's such a cool family atmosphere, but yeah, I've always wanted to run my own training school. Um, and like that's years down the road. Cause I feel like there's so much more that I want to learn personally before I get to that point. Did you ever ta- uh, reconnect with the the girl that was your friend? Yeah, I was going to ask uh, that. Who was a fan? I actually, I actually still keep in contact with her. Nice. Um, we had lost contact for maybe two or three years. And she had hit me up out of the blue just on a wild guess of like, hey, is this still your email? <laughs> like, you know, and it's not in. It's crazy because like I feel like it was like fate that we were supposed to be reunited because it wasn't even an email that i use currently like Uh, it was like oh man i bought this thing that went to this email oh now i have to log into this and do the verification code and literally within like i think she sent it a minute before i logged in oh wow and i was like and i was like whoa this is creepy that is weird and so like i emailed her back and we you know we we try to hook up our schedules are just crazy different but we do stay in touch now currently oh good is she excited that you're a that you're a wwe superstar now she couldn't believe it. <laughs> she was like, what? This actually happened? This is where you went three years ago? Oh, my God. I'm so excited. You know? And so she has a son and everything that too, who's really big into professional wrestling and just sports entertainment as a whole. And so that's like one of the things that I like. I can't wait to like just come drive by one day and be like, hey, what's up? It's me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> his face. Because I haven't seen him since he was born. Um, oh, wow. so he's, oh gosh, he has to be like seven, seven or eight now, but maybe, maybe even older than that, to be honest with you. Like, I haven't seen him in such a long time that like, I'm just like, oh, I want to see him. I want to see his face. And That's you know, awesome. it's top story. <laughs> you really are like Auntie Ember to him anyway. He has, a, <laughs> he has an empty ember. That's so sweet. I love it. I know. Uh, that's great. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you mentioned a little bit about, like, 
the 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 family dynamic and how there's you know conflict and blah blah, blah and that kind of it happens on the 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 ring as well too right how does that yeah. how did do, how does this i'm this is more of an outsider looking in how do the stories get created uh are they uh, i don't know again how how close is it to a D D session like in a way like i mean do you guys is it um, like oh we don't really know but we'll just kind of improvise out of it or is it all uh yeah i don't know so I, w- I would like to describe like what we do in sports entertainment as a soap opera with fighting like or like an athletic soap opera you know there's a good guy bad guy there's writers and like we act out what they give to us so that's kind of like the best way to describe it um without going through too much detail because i got to protect the craft a little bit sure um but yeah i think athletic sports opera there's always a good guy a bad guy and there is a story to be told it's kind of like the real housewives That's Ooh. basically the real Sort of. I mean, that is a guilty pleasure <laughs> for hard for me. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, it's, I love reality which, TV. By the way, I love that, the Real Housewives of Dallas. They're one of my favorites. Dude, and it's always on when I go to the gym. Like, it's like treadmill, boom. You I'm have like, the oh, best gym. In. Let's see the drama. I'd work out all the time. <laughs> Do you have, do you guys have, do you have agency in it? Like, do you get to like, oh, here's the, here's the story that the writers have come up with, but then like you can improvise within that or are there bullet points or. There's there's always like, um, because like our staff is so enormous and it is so big and there's so many talented people. Um, so like with just my brand alone, I believe we have like 70 people that are just on my brand for a two hour show every week. Oh my gosh. And so. On the other brand, they have more people because it's a three-hour show. So there's probably, like, anywhere from 150 to 200 talent, like, just uh, wrestlers, entertainers there. And then you have this ginormous writing staff that's trying to write all these awesome, intricate stories for who they can, when they can, when the time presents itself and stuff like that. So, like, they're (laughs) – so I guess what I'm saying is, is, like, not every writer can hone in on every character, but they can come up with an amazing story. And there might be some times that like they give something to me and I'm like, Ooh, I wouldn't say that. Like, or that's not for me type thing. Um, but yeah, that's when that improvising does come in. And I think like D and D does help with that because it's one of those like, Ooh, I got to think on the fly or Ooh, what would, what would, you know, naive say, or, you know, (laughs) You know, I, I had a one, one character that's a half drag. It's my favorite character. And every time, like, we start new characters, I pretty much, like, just leveled down my half dragging because I liked it so much. Yeah. I think I've done almost every class with her. Um, but she was made... <laughs> she was She's not even, like, a real half dragon. She was some, like, um, like construct of like wizards that kind of just fell into the wrong hands type thing Ooh, cool. so the only words i knew how to say were half wagon for the longest ah. time so like something would happen and they'd be like what do you think i'd be like half wagon and that'd be the only thing i would say for the entire adventure but i was just the tank like i was a lovable gullible tank and like to the point now where i'm like educated and like we did all these weird home brews with like comic book characters and stuff which is really cool and now i have like an epic shovel and i, just, <laughs> I call nice. myself the grave digger now <laughs> oh, so this is all right wrestling and D is is very totally. much all through this dna here so like yeah so like just improvising and character growth is like what i really love and that's what i'm able to do at work and at home separately of course but it's just really cool to have those factors that kind of intertwine that help with creativity as well yeah and then we hear that from folks in 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 hollywood who are doing you know both writing directing acting performing like they 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 like D D because it's it's close to what they do for their day job, mm-hmm. but not exactly. And they get to do different roles and things that they wouldn't normally exactly. be able to do, but they tell exactly. stories. I mean, it's all about telling stories together. Yeah, exactly. Like, and that's what it's, like I said, like you said it perfectly, like it's so close to what we do, but still far enough away to where I don't have to worry about like work and stuff like that. Like yeah. it's, it's work at play or, or play at work. I don't really remember the phrase. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like it's, it's I'm terrible at phrases. I really am. Um, but yeah, it's like a really cool way that I don't know. It just kind of helps me mentally and just 
it's it's relaxing like yeah. i remember like when i'd be on tour for like three or four weeks like in different countries traveling from here to there to there to here and i'd come home and i'd be like oh my god i get to play D D today like that is like the most like i get to turn off my phone throw it across the room and not be bothered for like six hours and like that's the best thing for me like it really is and i get so excited like i really do it feels like home it feels like you're finally home yeah it feels like i'm home and like i'm just surrounded by good people too that's great. That's important. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, this has been great. I love uh, just hearing your enthusiasm. I know. It's amazing. Both for, for wrestling and everything about that. But then, of course, all of the storytelling. I mean, you know, it's uh, anybody who can nerd out about a half dragon uh, uh, construct uh, is, is okay in my book. <laughs> yeah. that's. I mean, as you can tell, the dragons, like I told you, I have like, dragons everywhere. Yep. It's all because I fell in love with this character. And, like, it's, it's great. Like, literally, like, I just won't throw i have like maybe six character sheets for this one character and i just won't <laughs> throw them away i'll just be like oh we can level this one this version down and i can play this but like like i said like my my epic level half dragon is my favorite character that i've had and it's, that's cool i love it now you should frame those and put them up on the wall in your yeah. D room see i i should i don't have any more space on my walls like i'm actually looking now that i'm like yeah i should do that. <laughs> the ceiling the ceiling see? looks wide open <laughs> from like this thing just oh my god yes this might be a thing now that's a cool (laughs) idea i like that um so uh if people uh have 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 never watched you or know where to find you where where would be the best place to to kind of you know be an in for everything that ember moon is doing um so you can always follow me on twitter or instagram my twitter is uh wwe ember moon if it's not verified it is not me <laughs> um instagram is wwe underscore ember moon uh, but you can always see me on tuesday night smackdown uh in the u.s that comes on the usa network uh that's where you can see me perform but you can always go to wwe.com and in the search bar pick up ember moon and i'll bring up all my latest stuff uh also check up our up up down down channel uh which is where you can see us play D, where we roll out nerd out and just have fun and chaos in the process <laughs> nice. i actually don't know if i can watch you anymore because i like feel like i know you and i'm like i don't want her to get hurt <laughs> no don't do it like i, I don't touch her. rarely ever get hurt i, know. I rarely I, ever <laughs> I know, but like that says a lot about the performance because I'm like, oh god, that must have hurt. It's like, no, I can't watch this. And of course, Quinn's now like, oh, I want to try that. Let's do that right now. <laughs> like, oh, wait for your dad to get home. But no, it's fine. I'm I'm the good guy, so good guys always come up on top, sort of maybe. Sometimes. I don't want anyone to, to hurt. <laughs> nice. Don't do a don't do a heel turn. Uh, but I also I want to see a real like fireball move. Like I want to yeah. see like fire breathing. Uh, you know. That type of fun stuff. Oh my god, that would be great. I don't know if they would let me do that nowadays because I'd probably just light my hair on fire. <laughs> like uh, there was a wrestler by the name of Ricky Steamboat who used to actually come out and breathe fire. Like it, I was like, "Ooh, could you guys teach me?" I'm like, "No," and I was like, "No, it's cool. I'll just tie it. I'll tie it up back here, and then we'll be good." I'm like, Ooh, no. yeah, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> the insurance <laughs> rates just went up <laughs> just by us talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like but hopefully like i've always wanted to do stuff with fire just because my name's ember anyway right. so like every year they're like hey do you want to do something cool i'm like fire what, fire. What do do? fire right you guys figure Break out how it works down. but just make fire happen yep. i like it yeah that <laughs> it was awesome. really cool I almost, well, got, I almost got to use a blowtorch one year too so like oh yeah, and then that got kiboshed last minute. I was like, no. Oh. Oh. All right, well, bring back the, the blowtorch. I think that's cool. Even just having some pyrotechnics around. So just do it. Around Ask forgiveness more. later. Just that's, that's what we do as D&D is just like, <laughs> you'll just do it. And then, you know, sorry, I didn't know. We didn't know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time. Uh, really love it. And I can't wait for season three of uh, Rollout. That's going to be awesome. Yep. Sweet. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It was great. <laughs> Bye. Awesome. Bye. Bye. Uh, that was great. Uh, we are going to take a short break. We'll come back, Shelly and I, and do our intros and outros here for. I'm all saving of... a lot of my banter. You're saving it. You've yeah. been you've been banking. Like, oh, I gotta tell Tito. Oh, I'll wait until Friday. You gotta bank the banter. <laughs> my banked my banked banter. <laughs> We're gonna take a withdrawal from the banter <laughs> box today. Uh, so we'll do that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, thank you, all of you, for. I guess I could look at that camera. Uh, we gotta have like the red light. They was beep. 
Um, so yeah, you guys, uh, that was a great interview. We'll be back uh, after about a couple minutes. Sure. We, uh, I'm going to fill this up, I think. I'm going to eat something. You shouldn't eat anything. So hungry. Eating is not I'm worth so it. So hungry. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. We'll be back in just a little bit. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.